Hey folks, how's it going out there in YouTube world? This is uh, Peter, back again with another one. Um, this video is going to be a response to uh, a YouTube user, uh, Word Profit. And uh, I recently received a message from him uh, asking me why, scripturally, I believe in the Trinity and that he does not. Um, and so I am attempting to to lay down evidence of a trim, of a trinity. <clears throat> First off, a disclaimer: I am not here to um, insult Word Prophet. I am not here to discount his knowledge of the Scripture. I am not to I'm not here to defame his name or what he stands for. I am merely stating my opinions based on Scripture and nothing more. I just want to get that out there. Now, the first question I want to ask everyone, and it's a pretty simple question, has anyone ever had a Lego set? I'm pretty sure everyone has. Now, a Lego set comes in one package, right? It comes with many pieces. Now, you put all those pieces together, they become one. You take those pieces apart, they become many. You can use different pieces to create different things, but ultimately you can make them all do one. So, there are many pieces of one whole uh, object, and they do many different jobs. And this is likened unto the Trinity. This is you know, just a, a stupid small analogy, but I mean, it serves its purpose. Um, it basically describes how, how the Trinity works. Um, God is one, but he has different, uh, I guess you could say, entities uh, within himself. God has a son, uh, Jesus Christ. He has a spirit, which is holy, which is the Holy Spirit, and God himself is invisible. I mean, he is the invisible God, you know. <clears throat> so, first I want to do, what I want to do is I want to show a clip of, um, of uh, Word, Word Prophet uh, stating some of his beliefs. And, uh, and I'm going to do my rebuttal and commentary on that. So, check this out real fast. You about this is because there's a false doctrine in the churches that started in, in the uh, well it started in paganism and then it was uh, uh, then it was assimilated into the doctrines of the Roman Catholic religion and it gradually it gradually uh, seeped from there into all of her Protestant daughters and it is a, a pernicious doctrine of devils called Trinity there is no Trinity in the Bible there is no triune God there is no God the Son there is no God the Holy Spirit there are no three persons in the Godhead, so consequently there is no first person, second person, third person in the Godhead. There is only one person in the Godhead. His name is Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, as we've as we heard from that statement, he does not believe in the Trinity. He does not believe in a triune Godhead. Um, he believes that Jesus Christ is the only God. <coughs> okay. Well. You know, I don't believe that, but, you know, he has every right to. Um, I'm going to begin um, in uh, Genesis, because what better place to start than the beginning, right? So I'm going to begin with Genesis 1, 26, and it says, I'm just going to read, um, I'm just going to read where it has to do with a, a multiple uh, entity. Um, it says that, and God said, let, um, I'm sorry, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now notice the words, us, in our, indicating a council of at least one other entity with God at creation. And if we were creating, you know, if we 
in quotation mark, were creating, then that also denotes that he was creating with someone or through someone. We know there is no evidence in the Bible that angels have the power to create, nor is there evidence that the elders in heaven are able to create either. So it had to be Jesus speaking to the Father, or the Father speaking to Jesus, or the Spirit, or vice versa. We don't know for sure. And um, also, note that uh, we, us, and our, these pronouns, are used um, six different times in four different passages. And uh, I'll give you those passages here to read for yourselves. Now, now there's there's um, another point that I want to address where <clears throat> um, he goes into uh, Acts and he he talks about how Peter they were asking Peter how to be saved and Peter was telling them to be baptized into the name of Jesus and I was like okay sounds fair but then he goes and says this. And it kind of rubs me the wrong way because scripture tells a different tale. Check this out. Baptized in his name. To repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Now let me tell you something. If you have believed the Trinity lie, you have been taught to believe that God is three persons. These three persons are called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? Well, God the Father is God. God the Son is nobody. God the Holy Spirit is nobody. These are made up gods. They don't exist. Okay. The reason that the Catholic Church has taught you, that the devil has taught you through his Catholic Church, that God is three persons, is to cause you to think that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are names of these three persons. Okay, But they're not. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are titles that refer to three of the ways that Jesus Christ manifested himself to mankind to make available the salvation that he made available to us in the New Testament. Okay? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are titles. They're not names. Okay? You may be a father. You may be at the same time somebody's son. You may be at the same time somebody's husband. But Father, Son, and Husband are not your names. Okay? They're not names at all. They're titles that refer to offices that you stand in at, in, in relation to certain people. But you have a name. And if, you, if someone wants to have a relationship with you, they need to call you by your name. And for sure, if a woman wants to become your wife, she has to take your name. When you become part of the bride of Christ, you have to take his name. Being baptized in Jesus' name is the way that you take his name. So if you've been taught this Trinity lie, you believe that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are names of three persons. And therefore, in the, in the false denominational churches, they take you and they put you in the water and they say, pay attention here, they say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and then they dunk you down in the water and pull you out. They lied to you. They told you a straight lie because they told you they were going to baptize you in a name and they never said the name. They don't even know what the name is. And if they did know what it is, they won't admit it to you because it will contradict the doctrine that they believe and teach. Without the name of Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. If you are baptized without the name of Jesus Christ, you are just taking a bath, my friend. Your sins are still there. Your sins have not been remitted. You are still guilty before the living God. You have... <laughs> <laughs> no offense to uh, Word Prophet, I just had to chuckle about that one for a minute because um, <clears throat> we were basically taking a bath. Um, but in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, it specifically says, he's talking to his disciples where he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is biblical, folks. This is KJV. I'm not making this up. Um, all the names are capitalized. Why? Because they're different 
people. There are distinctive articles in front of each subject indicating three different entities. Okay? It says it right there. I don't have to uh, trinity it up, you know, or whatever you might say. But it says it right there. Okay? And <clears throat> if, you know, God the, God the Son and God the Spirit and nobody, why does Second Corinthians say this? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, why would he, if it's all just talking about one person, okay, why would there also, again, be three different, you know, they all have articles in front of them being the, and they're all talking about three different things. It just doesn't make sense. You know, um, John 17, 3 says, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You know, it doesn't really get any clearer than that. But, um, there's one more clip I want you guys to see, and then I'm going to wrap this up. He said, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the house of bondage, out of the land of Egypt. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what he said. That's who he is. He's the living God. Who else could walk upon the sea? Who else could tell the wind and the waves to be still? And they were. Who else could command dead people to come up out of their graves without praying to any god? Just say, Lazarus, come out. That was a, that that was a little bit erroneous, I have to say, because to say that Jesus didn't have to pray to his father to you know <clears throat> to do the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, I do believe I know I know Jesus is the resurrection, I get it, but to say that Jesus does not pray and cry out to his father because he is God. That's a little bit erroneous, my friend, because John 11, 41, 42 simply states, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Okay? So clearly there, Jesus only, <clears throat> he prayed to the Father only for those in attendance so that they might see God's glory. And also, when Jesus was on the cross, didn't he cry out to his Father who had abandoned him? Who led him, who, who crushed him on the cross? Didn't he say, in uh, Matthew twenty seven forty six, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, "Eli, I mean Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani." That is to say, "My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me?" Okay, so Jesus does pray, and I don't think that if Jesus is fully God, that he would talk to himself. <clears throat> He is fully God, but he's also a fully man as well. Moving on. I say um, that I appreciate the kind words of Word Prophet that he said to me. I hope that I didn't offend him in any way. Um, we can have different beliefs and still counsel one another and fellowship with one another and be brothers under Christ. And I just want to uh, thank him for his comments and his, uh, his criticism. And uh, God bless you all.